Hey everybody, uh, welcome once again to another exciting episode of Javier in the Air. So uh, this week, uh, there's no snow apocalypse, there's no, no snowmageddon. Uh, we are back to what is considered normal, relatively normal for this uh, area of Texas and actually for the state of Texas. And so we are all uh, getting to go back to our regular COVID lives. And so that means a little bit of still social distancing. That means keeping uh, clear of the hustle and bustle of big crowds. And that also means uh, where can I get my vaccine? When can I get my vaccine? And what can I do in the time and still be able to get out or go and get something to eat? So, uh, so speaking of that, uh, this morning, February 28th, 2021, uh, I actually went out um, with uh, my uh, some of my COVID bubble friends, and we went to a Oaxacan Mexican restaurant, and this place was called Santa Catarina, uh, that's Santa Catarina, and uh, we had brunch. Uh, we went really early, there was almost no one there, um, the wait staff was very... Um, uh, doting on us they were really good they were really helpful I appreciate that um, and so we just had a, a, a bite to eat some mimosas and that sort of thing so uh, let me take you over to the two quick videos that I have from there and then we'll talk a little bit about more brunch and we'll talk a little bit more about mimosas and then uh, we'll probably have I'll probably have a little beer review uh, and then um, we'll go from there. So right now it's going to be another short and sweet episode. So sit back, relax, and watch these quick videos from Santa Catarina. Hey, out here at uh, Santa Catarina for brunch. Uh, looks like we got a little bit of everything. There's a mimosa. Uh, we got some chips. That's a uh, daiquiri, mango daiquiri. Uh, of course, we got water. Um, and then we got chips and salsa. We'll see what we get for uh, the brunch. Okay, so we're looking at um, mixed fruit, mostly melons and pineapple, and then a taco of some sort. Yeah, with stuff in it. Uh, chicken mole with black beans and avocado on a bed of lettuce. Uh, this is, what is this? Huevos patitos. Okay, huevos patitos, I think is what was said. Black beans and chick eggs and potato. This is their breakfast enchilada with potatoes and black beans. Uh, I guess black beans are big Oaxacan style, so uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, this has a, a fried egg on top too. Hey, I'm back everyone. So there was brunch at uh, Santa Catarina. Uh, reasonably priced, decent food, uh, actually pretty good food, um, and uh, reasonably priced mimosas. So uh, if you get a chance and you're in this neck of the woods, definitely go by Santa Catarina and check out their uh, their menu. Really good menu. Uh, their mole, I think, is super fantastic. A really good mole. Um, and my friend James, who was having that meal, uh, really liked the mole as well. But I think it's just really good. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, brunch. So some people... Uh, are not too too familiar with brunch it's uh, a combination of breakfast lunch brunch um, and some people uh, love it on a Sunday that's them that's what they do it's a brunch and they have brunch with their friends or family and then they go about their day so um, for those of you who aren't in this area what are some of the places that you go for brunch um, I want to hear from you and see uh, uh, what where have you been and if I get some good responses, I'll post it next week in this podcast. Um, those of you that are in the Cedar Park, Austin area, what are some of the places that you've been to um, in this area? And so that maybe I get a chance to try them out and see if brunch becomes a regular thing for me. Uh, so uh, let me know and I'll check them out and I'll post next week as well. So now let's talk about mimosas. So um, mimosas are the brunch drink of choice. Uh, and it's basically the original mimosa, as far as I know, is champagne and orange juice. Usually, you know, maybe a, a shot, a shot and a half of orange juice, and then you fill the rest with champagne. Now, some people 
who I won't name, uh, prefer it more of a champagne with maybe a teardropper of uh, orange juice. And so that's they, the way they prefer it. And there's nothing wrong with that. You may not be able to get that at uh, restaurants because that's way more expensive for them, uh, even though it doesn't really cost them that much. Um, but they do mark it up for us. Uh, and by the way, Santa Catarina had a, a drink special mimosas that were only two bucks a piece. So go out and tell them I said hello. Um, so mimosas, what do you like in your mimosa? I've had some, uh, you know, uh, blood orange uh, liqueur before instead of orange juice. I've had grapefruit juice. I've had pineapple juice. Um, and yet they're still called mimosas. So it kind of depends on what you like and what you like to add to it. And if you're doing it at home, anything you want to add to it, uh, I, I feel as long as you have a little champagne component to it, that's your mimosa. You can call it a hob mosa. You can call it a, you know, John mosa. You can have it a Susie mosa. Whatever you want to call it because you're making it different than the standard mimosa, I think you're going to enjoy it. So um, that is uh, basically the mimosa part. Um, and the brunch. So now um, what I wound up doing is I've talked about these guys before. I'll see if I can show you something about them. So after the brunch, um, if you still feel a bit peckish or you feel like, okay, I've had a little bit too much to drink and now I need something uh, to wash down all this alcohol and food with so I can sober up a little bit, uh, or you're just looking for a good drink to have, um, you might want to go to this place uh, that I usually go to on Saturdays after our workout. Uh, this place is called, uh, see if I can get it, do it justice, Mojo Coffee. This is Mojo Coffee. We, I've talked about them before. They are on 620, very close to my house. And they have some phenomenal coffee. The team out there is fantastic. They did a great job. They were even there like the day after when uh, people were allowed to get back on the streets they were out there as of 5:30 uh, that morning to start serving delicious coffee to people like myself who risked it to go get some coffee because they needed something other than their own coffee sludge that they made at home so uh, mojo coffee has the the kind of standard you know frappuccino blended type things uh, they also have your standard coffee they also have uh, some unusual things uh, flavors uh, they have Snickers uh, flavor and they have the mocha, but they also have a white chocolate mocha and a dark chocolate mocha and then the standard mocha. Uh, they also have something that they call the six shooter and it is six shots of espresso. And then you add, you can either just have that with a little bit of like water on top. Uh, it's not truly an Americano because it's not that much water. There's not enough room left. Um, or you can just have the six the six shots with like a milk or something like that i personally have not ordered it because i don't need that much coffee throughout uh in the day that i go i usually go close to 10 11 12 o'clock on the weekend i don't need six shots of uh of espresso to keep my day going uh however i do know someone that does and they swear by it they said it's really good um so if you get a chance get the six shooter see if i can get this on the screen six shooter six shots of espresso um support your local uh establishment this is like a um it's not really a mom and pop place it's a franchise but it's owned by some i believe local people uh so it's it's almost as mom and pop as you can get around here um plus it's really good coffee and then they have something called muffin tops which is uh, which was huge. I know it started like in the late 90s, I think, where people didn't want the whole muffin. They wanted just the top of the muffin. So they will, uh, they can, you can order a muffin top and it's literally just the top of the muffin uh, there and they have different flavors and you can get it warmed up if you want. They'll warm it up for you and give it to you. Now, um, for those of you who are, who are in this area, it's where the Mr. Gaddies used to be uh, Mr. Gaddy's uh, went belly up in that location and they took it over. They repainted the entire outside black and there and there it is, Mojo Coffee. So it's been around, I want to say it started maybe shortly before COVID did. So it's been there for less than a year uh, and the team out there is really great. You get a little punch card and if you get 10, you know, your next drink is uh, I think free, uh, totally free. 
but you're going to want to have to try different things. So I recommend uh, just a regular, uh, you know, vanilla latte. Sometimes I get French vanilla. And for those of you who don't know how to make French vanilla, you take uh, basically hazelnut and vanilla. Voila, you have French vanilla. So uh, there's, uh, I have my French vanilla latte, and I've actually tried their muffin tops. I recommend the orange cranberry or the lemon poppy seed. Uh, two of their uh, big hits. I think it's really good and uh, it's something fantastic. So, all right, so we talked about brunch. Um, please send me your notes on brunch and what you think about it and, and where are some of the places you go. And then we'll talk. Oh, uh, I got, here's a good uh, story for you. So, there is a place in Florida, South Florida, and if anybody's been there uh, besides, you know, uh, myself and my brother, if anybody else has been out there, uh, let me know. This place is called the Blue Moon Fish Company, and it's actually in Fort Lauderdale. It's on the uh, intercoastal. And it's a really great place, very fancy. I actually had to uh, dress up uh, to go to it, and you know I'm not I'm not a, uh, a clothes uh, hog or a style um, kind of person, so I, I actually had to uh, figure out how to dress up for that. Dress up enough for Fort Lauderdale anyway. So I uh, went out there, uh, Blue Moon Fish Company, uh, a huge, huge spread. Now this is more uh, closer to what you would consider a true brunch uh, style brunch. Uh, Santa Catarina, you order and they have mimosas on sale and it's really good. But the Blue Moon Fish Company had where you go and you pay, I think it was 40 or 50 bucks a person and they have this huge spread a uh, long table full of like food of uh, fruit and pastries and uh, sausage and bacon and eggs and all that stuff and then they had a uh, an omelet chef who was there and you tell him what you wanted on your omelet and he'll make the omelet for you right there and then so it's not pre-cooked or anything like that it's right there uh, they also had prime rib that you could just walk up and they'll slice off some prime rib for you um, and then you go back to your seat and start digging in and then it you know wasn't bottomless mimosas but they did bring you a lot of mimosas and so it was really good um for the money it was totally worth it uh the experience it was nice if you never uh, sat out on the intercoastal in fort lauderdale it was really nice um, but i'd like to hear from anybody who may have visited that and their opinion of the blue moon fish company uh, also, what was your experience uh, of brunch? Maybe the first time you ever had brunch. And if those of you are looking for someone to go to brunch with, that's a great conversationalist. Uh, so you can, uh, I can definitely uh, join you for brunch, and uh, we can have conversations, and they may actually make it onto this podcast. So, uh, real quick, some uh, housekeeping. Uh, this is, if you uh, would like, you can add yourself uh, as a subscriber to my podcast, Javier in the Air. You can Google it. It's on YouTube. It's public, so you should be able to find it. I was able to find it quite easily, so you should be able to also. Um, please subscribe, and then you'll get notifications every week when I when I drop the next uh, episode. So um, if I'm looking for always looking for people to interview uh, that are interested please contact me um, direct message me send me an email carrier pigeon uh, snail mail um, you know however you can get to me uh, the Pony Express uh, you know a telegram however you can get to me and let me know that you are interested in being interviewed I try not to reach out to people just randomly or hey here's somebody and they give me a number and try to reach out to them because chances are when I reach out to them they do not uh, really want to be interviewed so what I'd like is the people that uh, want to be interviewed let me know I also try to throw topics out there and if you're interested in talking about a topic let me know and I'll interview you and so I'm looking for people that are interested in games people that are passionate about something uh, people that are passionate about arts and crafts Maybe you own a mom and pop local establishment and you'd like to get on the air. Um, I'm not reaching a lot of people yet, but I'm hoping that will change soon. Uh, but I am reaching enough people that they, they do get out there and they have let people know, hey, I, I saw you on Javier's podcast. Uh, so I am getting out there a little bit. 
Um, if you uh, found something interesting in the Austin Cedar Park area that you think people should know about, let me know. If you are not in the Austin Cedar Park area and you have a mom and pop establishment, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to interview you as well. And we'll get it out there, get it here, get it out to friends and family where you live, and we can certainly do that. And that would be really great for both you and for me. Um, let's see, uh, any other topic besides the two that I always talk about, which is no religion, no politics, anything else that you'd like to talk to me about, get on one of my panels, beer tasting panels, alcohol tasting panels. Um, we might have a deep discussion panel later on in the year. Uh, let me know and I'll add you to my list and I'll reach out to you every now and then and say, hey, I'm doing this. Are you interested in, in joining me? So uh, we'll do that. And so if you're interested, direct message me, however you want to get a hold of me and let me know how you're, I'm interested in being interviewed or how you're, I just want to uh, go on your show and talk about this, that or the other. So uh, I will pretty much talk your ear off about anything. Hence why I started a podcast. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to change gears uh, and as the second part of the show, as we always do, or as I always do, we're going to have a beer review. So I'm going to throw out a beer review. This is from Infamous Brewing Company here, uh, actually in Austin. I'm in Cedar Park, but it doesn't really matter. But Austin, Infamous Brewing Company, this is their uh, Mexican chocolate coffee stout. So, uh, beer review, Hobbs, and I take it away, and then I'll come back to finish up. Hey, everybody, uh, beer review time. This is beer review 116 of, uh, I guess, the COVID La Rona, however you want to do it. We got here today uh, Infamous Brewing Company out of Austin, Texas. This is their Mexican chocolate, and it is a coffee stout. Uh, for those of you that love the high ABVs, it's only an 8.0, so uh, sorry about that. Um, and uh, once again, thanks to uh, the team out of Brutique for having the uh, beer. So uh, let me uh, come over here now. Forgive my uh, rower. We're going to pour now. Oh, we're going to spill now. Yes, there's some judgment going on in the garage here, so my pouring technique. All right, so here's the infamous Mexican chocolate. Get you a better look there. There's a coffee stout. There's there's like a you know Day of the Dead guy, like a little cocoa there. I don't know. That kind of looks like a. It's got different shots again. Probably Day of the Dead stuff. So, Mexican Chocolate Infamous Brewing Company. So, all right. So, let's take a look and see what we got here. Real heavy. Heavy foam, I think, probably because I poured it so uh, poorly. Uh, no pun intended. So, uh, let's try it out. Uh, that's not bad. Um, uh, definitely the hint... You get a little bit of the Mexican chocolate. If you grew up like I did, drinking that Abuelita Mexican chocolate, um, it definitely does not taste like that. Um, however, it's a good dark look to it. So, um, like you would for most uh, coffee stouts. Uh, but let me see, have some more. Uh, good on the way. Uh, uh, good on the way in. Good on the way down. Um, again, it's not stellar. It doesn't really pack a punch when it comes to uh, the chocolate or the coffee for that matter. Definitely has a good taste of a stout. So I'm going to pass this on to my uh, secondary judge so he can give a, a number of thumbs for it. And then I am going to give this a 7.5. Thumbs up. And then for our second judge. Six. He's going to give it a six. Yes. So there you have it. Infamous Mexican chocolate coffee stout. Uh, and um, if you have a chance, go out to the team out at Brutique. Let me fix this before someone says anything on the, on the podcast. And we're going to take it back to... The podcast. Take it away, podcast, Hav. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Beer Review, Hav. And so there you have it. Infamous Brewing Company, 
their Mexican chocolate a um, little bit uh, above average. Um, I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, you saw the, the uh, uh, not a dissenting opinion, but a little bit uh, harsher opinion. Um, and I think we were both expecting a little bit more of a punch to that Mexican chocolate or even to the coffee itself. Uh, but overall, not bad as far as the stop goes. Uh, and it was still above 50%, so that's uh, that's usually good. Um, so if you haven't watched any of my shows before, uh, every part of my show has something about uh, uh, an interest in something or passion about something. I try to interview someone, um, and then it's beer. So uh, hopefully you've watched it up till this point. Uh, or you just fast forward it to the review part or you've already cut off by now if so sad to see you go um, that you missed out on this video the rest of it but anyway so I hope everybody is having a good uh, February 28th uh, the last day of the month of February I hope February has been good to you other than snow uh, apocalypse and snowmageddon uh, I hope everybody has water and power back uh, and I hope you're doing well and so um, uh, be sure and we're going to be uh, marching into March starting tomorrow and we're actually doing a panel this Thursday of Irish type theme for uh, St. Paddy's Day for the month of March uh, which is March 17th and we are going to be having some Irish whiskey and some Irish uh, beers or some Irish type beers depending on what we can get a hold of so if you're interested in joining the panel it's going to be thursday this thursday uh at 7 p.m so that is actually uh march 4th 7 p.m uh i will be running it as always uh you'll see some uh old time podcast favorites such as uh james pavlowski and uh, robert ayala and hopefully jesse cruz and candace coleman will be able to join us as well if you'd like to join us on that panel be sure and direct message me either uh, on or uh, message me on YouTube or direct message me on Facebook if you have me on, as a friend on Facebook uh, and I'll get you on the panel. Uh, the more the merrier, the more fun we have. It's usually a longer podcast than normal and it might actually be the entire podcast is the panel because sometimes we get pretty long on there and I hate to cut any of it because it's all uh, video gold. So um, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. I hope you've been staying safe during this time. I know we're back to normal now, a relative normal for the state of Texas. I hope you're safe in your area. And uh, if you want to um, ever have a beer with me uh, or some brunch, uh, let me know. Uh, we're still keeping socially distanced, uh, but hopefully uh, we can start at least moving around more than we have over the past uh, 10 months. So anyway... Have a good one. I'll t I'll see y'all again next week for the uh, for the panel, and have a good day.